That's a good breeze. Tony Desimut in a rare quiet moment. There's a turtle, incoming turtle. <laughs> Most of the time, she's zooming through the woods, just months after racing to beat her second bout of ovarian cancer. Desimitz has fought battles of a different kind. That is it. It's your badge. The retired police chief in Cary, North Carolina, is also a veteran of Operation Desert Storm in Iraq. My unit was um, 528 Special Operations Support Battalion. Now the country she fought for can't get her doctor the drugs to heal her. She came in a little frazzled and she's like, I have some, you know, really bad news. Um, you, you're not going to be able to get your carboplatin tomorrow. Desimitz is not alone. The University of Utah found that U.S. drug shortages set a record last year with 309 scarce drugs, the majority inexpensive generic drugs, including carboplatin. I'm glad you could come. Laura Bray founded Florida-based Angels for Change, a patient-centered nonprofit that is working to end shortages. She found the carboplatin that Desimitz needed. The group supplies entire hospitals, so administrators can avoid tough decisions about sick patients. And it's the, the head buyer, the head pharmacist, the head medical officer with an ethics person, and they're saying, they're opening up files and they're saying, who's going to get this and who's not? That's our current mitigation strategy for shortages in the United States. Congress is taking note. We were unable to treat 90% of patients as scheduled who should have received the drug. Experts blame the shortages on low cost. Here's how that works. An injectable generic drug requires extensive testing and development. It requires exact manufacturing protocols and regulatory approval from the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. And then experts say the market forces the price down to less than the cost of a bottle of water. These low prices reduce the incentive and ability of manufacturers to invest in quality or in newer facilities. That pushes production offshore. That means India, where the FDA recently blocked some imports for quality issues. Or China, also a major supplier of U.S. drugs. We could have patients, uh, cancer patients or pediatric patients or other patients, without the drugs they need because a country simply blocks us from having access to those drugs. Uh, and that's, you know, we don't rely on other countries to make the bullets when we fight wars, especially our sworn enemies. Javier Brucera spoke exclusively with VOA about that. He is the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the agency that handles prescription drugs. Do you support domestic manufacturing and how do we economically do that? Absolutely. Uh, and uh, the, pre uh, the president has been very clear on this. Where we can, we should manufacture at home. Do you support raising the price of these generic injectables? We support looking at every option that should be on the table because, as I said, the the market is broken when it comes to these medications. Secretary Becerra says his agency is doing as much as it can until it gets more authority from Congress. That authority could include offering manufacturers incentives to help close the gap. Could I get another surf set bowl? Tony Desimit's cancer is now in remission after receiving carboplatin, the life-saving drug that remains in short supply. Carolyn Prasuti, VOA News, Cary, North Carolina.